This is an introduction to the Applied Cryptography and Trust module. The module number is CSN11131. Okay, so in this introduction, I'll show some of the methods that we'll be using in the, in the coverage of the module and also some of the theoretical and practical areas that we'll be covering. And as you may know, uh, cryptography and encryption uh, provide a core part of our cybersecurity infrastructure. If we look at GDPR, then in GDPR, citizens have rights to own their own data. Also, we need to make sure that we have a strong instant response to any data breaches. But also at the core is encryption and the usage of encryption for uh, privacy. But we also need to add encryption for integrity and identity checking along with access control. And then finally, there's a concept called pseudo anonymity. Increasingly, we need to make sure that our data is anonymized in some way. So along the way, we'll find that we'll tell stories that talk about Bob and Alice. And it's our goal to make sure that Bob and Alice can communicate securely and that Eve doesn't get involved and eavesdrop on their conversations or tries to modify any of their communications or even tries to pretend to be the other person. For this, we'll probably need Trent and Trent is the trusted entity that both Bob and Alice trust. And we'll see how Trent is used later on in the module. So, a famous saying says, encryption works great uh, until it doesn't. Encryption works great as long as no one makes a mistake. Encryption works great unless something goes wrong. And encryption works great as long as everything works right. And we'll see the methods that we'll apply along the way are, are fairly secure, but unfortunately errors and problems can occur in the methods that we implement. So here are some of the cyber actors that we might come across. Here's Bob and here's Alice. And there's Trent again. And Bob trusts Trent and Alice trusts Trent. Fortunately, we get Eve, who might eavesdrop on the communication, and also Matheroy, who might actually actively attack Bob or Alice. Faith is a trusted entity. And when we're proving things, we talk about Peggy, the prover, and Victor, the verifier, so that Peggy can create a proof of something and Victor will, will be the verifier of that proof. And Wendy, well, she knows a secret. Okay, so the module delivery uh, is, is, um, uses a range of methods. At the core is, the, is Teams, where we've set up a Teams channel and it's there you should send any communications that uh, relate to the module and any questions that you may add, ask. You will see postings of lecture material, uh, lab material and so on on the Teams channel. All of the videos or the pre-recorded videos and demonstrations will be on YouTube, but the actual class recordings will be on Teams. You might find some updates on Twitter if you want. And we've set up a site called asecuritysite.com, which has demonstrations of many of the methods that we're going to use. Later on in the module, we'll be using Overleaf or have the possibility of using Overleaf for the coursework. And then finally, our main uh, GitHub for all of the content is at this URL here. So you should find that when we go there, then each of the, the units should be there. And within each unit, you'll find there's a lab, a lecture, and there might be some source code. And then uh, there should be details of what you should know at the end of the unit and some presentations and, and uh, additional tutorial work. 
Okay, if you want, you can download the GitHub, but make sure you update uh, the, uh, the, the content as it changes. Okay, so that's the main place that you'll find uh, the content for the labs and the lectures. Okay, so as I said, we'll be using uh, YouTube for uh, pre-recorded lectures and lab demonstrations. Overleaf could, can be used for the coursework and I'll explain that when we when we get to it. But the labs themselves uh, are based around a Ubuntu instance which has OpenSSL, Python and Node.js installed. These provide the core methods that we use to be able to implement our cryptography. It's possible for you to create your own Ubuntu instance and we set up an AWS uh, virtual lab environment so that you can actually set up your own Ubuntu infrastructure. But we'll also be using the uh, AWS uh, cryptography uh, infrastructure. That's built around the KMS or key management system, uh, secrets management, and also the hardware security module. So in some of the labs, we'll be using the VSOC 2 infrastructure with Ubuntu, but we'll also be using uh, an AWS integration. So I'll just give you a quick uh, demonstration of those. So here is our VSOC 2. So just let me get logged in here. And within here, you should find that we will have our Python integration. So uh, typically we use nano. So we'll print nano, control X and save it, python 1.py and that's it there. Okay, so you should also find that it has node installed and control C and control C again and we also have open SSL and so on. Hashcat is installed in here and we'll be using that later on but most of the tools that we need should be set up in here too. And we've also got some other tools such as Golang and uh, some of our blockchain uh, tools. Okay, but this is our main uh, lab area that we have here. Okay. And then when it comes to AWS, so you should be set up for the AWS environment. This is the AWS environment here. Uh, we can run Python code here too if we need to. And as we'll find, we can run uh, AWS commands in here. Okay, but what we've also got is the AWS command line command management console. So for that, we've got to start the lab up and you will see this little tab go green, a little green light in a little minute. And we, then we should be able to get access to our management console. From there, we'll be using uh, our key management system to be able to integrate our encryption into the, the cloud. So it just takes a little minute to start up. It should be there soon. Okay. 
Okay, so once it turns green, we should be able to go here. And then we'll typically be going into the key management service here. And then creating our keys and so on. Okay, as we go along, we'll find symmetric keys, H symmetric keys, Mac, and uh, and other other options there. Okay, so that's your AWS environment, and the other one is the the VSOC environment uh, here. And so the module is run. So there is a two hour. Uh, lecture on a Friday morning from 9 till 11 and that's followed by a lab from 11 till 1 p.m. in C27 or Teams and then there's an even, evening session from 6 till 7 o'clock. The lecture covers principles, some demos and then we'll have a little Mentimeter test at the end of the lecture. It's a little bit of fun. Then the uh, the labs involve uh, VSOC 2 and the Ubuntu in instance or using AWS. And then in the evening, we'll recap what was covered through the day. Uh, again, have another little Mentimeter test and occasionally we'll have some guest talks from some leading uh, people involved in the area. So here's the, the flow of the material that, that we have. Uh, so, week two, ciphers and fundamentals, symmetric key, and so on. The first test happens in week nine, and it's worth 40% of the overall module. The pass mark is 50%. Then after that, uh, we go into the second uh, block, which is focusing on the coursework. Coursework is worth 60% and is handed in at the end of the module. Okay, there's a break somewhere around here uh, for the for the Easter break. So here's a quick overview of how all our cryptography kind of fits together. Bob and Alice need to communicate and they need to communicate securely. So for that, they use an encryption method such as a symmetric key encryption method. That's where they both use the same encryption key and we use a highly efficient symmetric key encryption method such as AES or ChaCha20. But to be able to get the key from Bob to Alice, we often need a key exchange method. For that, we can use the Diffie-Hellman or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman method for them both to uh, have the same encryption key that they can use to encrypt and decrypt. And how do they prove each other to themselves? Well, for that, we need some trust infrastructure using the public key infrastructure and using digital certificates. Then we need to create trust in our data to make sure it hasn't been modified. For that, we can use hashing and message authentication uh, codes. And then finally, we need to be able to uh, prove that we have that Bob is Bob and Alice is Alice. And for that, we often use public key encryption, such as with RSA and the elliptic curve method. And with this, we have what's called a key pair, a public key and a private key. Throughout the module, I'll show the public key as a padlock and the private key just as a key that fits into the padlock. Bob can distribute many of his uh, padlocks here but he only has one key to be able to open it. And then finally, we have a whole lot of things related to privacy, such as zero knowledge proofs, homomorphic encryption, and digital signing. We'll try and cover the complete picture so that you understand how all these complex mechanisms fit together. So in the first unit, we'll look at some of the fundamentals around traditional ciphers, still important, and it gives you a way to be able to train your mind in how to crack ciphers. 
Then we'll look at key-based encryption, some encoding methods, random numbers, big integers, and some of the methods, the operators that we use for encryption. This will provide us with the basic foundation for the module and cover some of the key principles involved. The second module looks at what's called symmetric key encryption. For this, Bob and Alice have the same key. Just like having a key for your front door, you might share that with your family or friends so that they have the same key to open the lock. The main methods we look in here are AES and ChaCha20, but we'll also look at the difference between what's called a block cipher and a stream cipher. Stream ciphers we'll find are very fast, block ciphers are slower. But we also need to make sure that our ciphers are changing. We go from plain text to cipher text to plain text, encrypt and then decrypt. So for that, we need salt and we add salt into the ciphering process to make sure that it's forever changing. And then finally, we need to understand how strong our encryption keys are. So we'll look at what's called key entropy. Then we'll look at trustworthiness of the data and to be able to define cryptographic hashing. This will allow us to take any amount of data and create a fingerprint for the data so that we know if the data has been changed or not. MD5, SHA1, SHA2, uh, SHA3, LM, hash, bcrypt, PBK, DFS2 are just uh, a few of the hashing methods we can use. For that, we'll look at how we can crack them, such as with Hashcat, then how we store our hash passwords, and then finally on to looking at one-time passwords and message authentication codes, or MACs. These MACs allow us to be able to sign for a hashed value. Then we'll move on to public key encryption or asymmetric key encryption. And we'll look at three main methods, two mainly RSA and elliptic curve which are used fairly extensively on the internet. Then we look to see how we can use the private key of asymmetric key to be able to sign to prove that Bob is Bob. And finally, we'll have a look at how we can sign for email to make it more trusted. Then we'll look at key exchange and especially how Bob can get and Alice can get the same encryption key without Eve finding out. For that, we'll look at the Diffie-Hellman method that was created to allow Bob and Alice to openly communicate, but then to end up with the same shared encryption key, but where Eve cannot determine that key. We can also use it to be able to, we can also use public key to pass the, the, the secret key if we want, and then finally, we'll look at the most used method, which is elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, which is based on the Diffie-Hellman method, but uses elliptic curve cryptography. Then we'll build on this to look at what are called digital signatures and how we can store the public key on a digital certificate. This will show us how we've built the public key infrastructure and how we use certificates to make sure that Eve can sign for the public key of Bob and then for Alice to be able to trust that. For this, we'll look at how Eve can sign, our, uh, how Trent can sign uh, our, our certificates and for them to be trustworthy. Then finally, we'll look at how digital signatures are created and this allows Bob to sign a message to Alice and Alice will know that he has signed that message with his private key. DSA, ECDSA. ECDSA is used in Bitcoin and Ethereum and a lot of applications. And also we looked at hash-based signature methods. We'll then build a greater picture of how the communication, secure communication happens between Bob and Alice when we look at SSL and TLS communications. For this, 
will be able to look at the packets that are sent and understand how they communicate to be able to set up a TLS or TLS uh, a, a communication tunnel. Also, we'll look at SSH and to see how we can uh, authenticate our remote connections. And then finally, on to a VPN type protocol known as IPsec. Then we'll look at some of the modern methods that we would find for building blockchains and cryptocurrencies. With us, focus on uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and then how we create smart contracts. In fact, we'll have a lab which will allow us to be able to build smart contracts and create our own cryptocurrency. Then we'll look to the future and look at the cryptography that's been developed at the current time to be able to address many of the issues that we have around privacy and trust. This will include zero-knowledge proofs, homomorphic encryption, lightweight encryption, quantum robust cryptography, and secure enclaves. What we'll find is that our existing public key encryption methods can be often cracked by quantum computers. So we need to move towards a world where we have quantum robust public key encryption methods. Also, uh, the encryption that we have isn't well suited for IoT devices and sensors. So there is evolving standards around lightweight cryptography. This will give us a chance to investigate one of these methods in, for your coursework. And then finally, we'll look at host and cloud trust, how we can set up secure enclaves, uh, also hardware and software tokens. Uh, this is my little uh, Ubi key uh, with a PIN number, but we can get these with uh, biometrics and so on. And increasingly, we're moving towards a passwordless uh, system and FIDO2 allows us to be able to integrate these hardware tokens. Also, we'll have a look at some biometric cryptography. Okay, so that's the coverage of the module. And really, if you have any questions, then please ask. Thank you.